This is a presentation by Strike Consultants regarding a project that we are currently working on where we are designing a pavilion which is to travel to three cities in Europe and may consider other locations in the future for a period of up to six months. The given constraints for this project are the cost, a suitable design for various climate and ground conditions, a minimum of four 4x4 four four rooms with a minimum height of six meters at the center, and to allow for a simple and fast assembly and disassembly project. All of the components have to fit into one container and the pavilion has a lifespan of 10 years. Other important features that need to be considered are the interior climate control, fire and theft safety and logistics. We can consider different material options. For the roof, we can use ETFE, PVC for the facades, fiber reinforced plastics, aluminum alloy, titanium alloy and timber are all possible choices. For structural elements used in supporting the structure, we can use either steel frames or timber panels. After researching several architects and several possible pavilion ideas, the design team was inspired by amethyst crystals and came up with a unique structure made of three towers, two double-story slanted ones connected with a bridge and a single-story one. Tower A is slanted at an angle of 80 degrees and Tower C at an angle of 45 degrees. The design is both architecturally and structurally unique. It is made of timber panels which are easily assembled and disassembled and satisfy both area and height requirements. A few problems though include the transport of the material and the complexity of the structure which may cause wasted feasible space. The stimulus is a structure inspired by the psychological term stimuli as each person perceives this building differently. It's a cubical structure made of four tubes gradually decreasing in size from a 6x6 cube to a 4x4 and folding in a curvy fashion. A wavy roof covers the open space, cantilevering outside providing additional feasible space. The roof of the cubes is made by a combination of structural timber panels and fiberglass to allow for natural light where needed. The roof will be made of flexible silicon wafer solar cells, providing the required electricity needs of the structure. Structural timber panels filled with wood fiber for insulation will be used for the walls and the floor is made of plywood sitting on wood joists. The panels transfer both the vertical and lateral loads acting on the cube to the ground. As observed in the diagram, the columns will act both in compression and tension where needed to transfer the roof loads. Additional tension cables may be provided to resist possible uplift wind loads. The floor slabs will in turn transport the loads acting on the floor to the pad foundations. In terms of construction, the pad foundations will be placed first. Phase 2 is the floor assembly on the foundations using the idea of positive negative terminals. With this same idea, the rest of the floor is assembled and the floors are then fitted to the floor in phase 3. The cubes are assembled in a similar fashion and are built from the smaller cube to the larger and unfolded in place. The design is smart, architecturally impressive and easy to assemble and deassemble. It is comfortably transported in a standard container and satisfies the area and height requirements of the client. The possible use of photovoltaic cells allows for the necessary electricity generation needed. No large machinery is required, but perhaps trained personnel would be needed to assemble the structure. The interior of traveling pavilion should consider the following. Space, color, and lighting. Space includes the use of interior area and connection between exhibition spaces. For color, it is suggested to use a neutral color such as white or light beige. Since natural light might not be the best for searching artwork, a combination of artificial light and natural light will be used accordingly. For this design, the four separate rooms will accommodate different styles of artwork, with a bigger sculpture in the biggest room and smaller pieces and drawing in the smaller room. The direction of rooms are placed to allow a more fluid movement of visitor from one block to another. The outer roof area could be used as food area, necessity or common area. Here are the sides, front and plan elevations for our third proposal. The team wanted to create a folding pavilion due to the unique shape and would also allow easy packaging and transportation. It consists of a large central hall of height 6 meters, with smaller shelves either side of it. The roofs are curved and designed in a way so that they extend over the next shelf. This allows all the smaller shelves to fit inside the central hall. You can see the final developed idea in 3D, which we named the Plurium, inspired by the Doppler shift. The roof of the central hall will be made of a combination of structural timber panels and fiberglass, whereas for the shell covers, flexible solar shelves will be used. The side skeleton will be made of a structural timber panels filled with a wood fiber. And finally, PVC will be used for the connections between adjacent roofs and walls. After developing our Doplerian pavilion, we came up with the load paths. You can see from the drawing that the roof is in tension and the load will disperse to the edges. Here, they will travel down the sides of the pavilion with joint compression to the foundations. The loads in the floor panels spread in both ways horizontally and down to the foundations. This slide explains the construction sequence for Doplerian. You can see that the roofs and sides have been split up and each one has a positive and negative terminal. 
This allows them to be inserted together when assembled. The floor has a similar method of assembly as the previous proposal. The bottom right image shows how the smaller shelves extend and fit back into the central hall. The pros for this structure is that it is easily assembled and disassembled. It is also a smart structure with compact and easily transportable. It is architecturally impressive and there is easy room allocations, satisfying specification. It is also structurally rigid. However, a skilled workforce may be needed. In this design, there are five rooms in total. Each room is separated by an interior wall and a door to create the separation needed between spaces. Since there aren't any fixed objects, sculptures and painting can be easily moved around to accommodate artists' preference. The team decided on using temporary pad foundations, details of which are shown in the diagram. The clearance of the floor panels can be easily adjusted, therefore the foundation can be adapted to the existing ground conditions. The advantages of this type of foundation are small, light and portable, easy assembled, sustainable, no ground alternation required. In order to define the types and level of risk for the project, we have defined a risk double type statement, which can be summarized by structural behavior, sustainability, financial risk, and time constraints. An inherent risk assessment was carried out, and the top 10 possible risks were listed and plotted on a probability versus impact diagram. Extreme weather conditions, fire, and regulations were identified as the initial critical risks. Mitigation measures were considered to reduce these risks, and consequently a residual risk assessment was carried out that changed the project from a high-medium risk to a medium to low risk project. High energy efficiency is another condition that we aim to satisfy. This can be done by the use of LED lighting, solar panels and implementing certain energy efficient mechanical systems. Thank you very much for your attention. We would like to thank our coordinators Dr. Macorini and Dr. Phillips and our clients WSP for their cooperation.